Edward L. Moore, author of the book, No Excuses When Failure Is No Longer An Option. How's it going today? <laughs> How you doing, my brother? Doing good. Doing good, man. Great to get you on the show. Um, I'm from the I'm from the Bay myself. I grew up in Emeryville, uh, lived in Richmond. So uh, definitely great to get another Barry, your family, on the line here. Well, it's definitely a pleasure and an honor to be on the show today, man. I'm excited about being on the show. I've been excited about the opportunity all week, so I'm, I'm happy to be here. Definitely, definitely. So we're, we're talking with Edward L. Moore. He's the author of the book, like I said, No Excuses, When Failure is No Longer an Option. Just came out yesterday, but I wanted to start off you on your website you talk about team no excuses so hashtag team no excuses and I wanted to give you opportunity to talk about what that means uh, what is it and how did it come about well you know it's a really interesting story about how team no excuses uh, came about team no excuses came about with three original members that was myself and, and two of my sons and uh, one day we was at uh, my son's football practice and he kept making excuses for why he couldn't execute well. And I was like, listen, man, we're team no excuses. And from that, um, it just kind of just, just morphed into a, to a movement and a following. Um, I started doing uh, motivational speaking a short time later. And uh, I adopted the, the, the philosophy of, of no excuses, eliminating anything that was standing in the way of you getting to your destiny. And, um, you know, the following just ensued, man. And it was, and I, what I found out is there was other people that felt the exact same way that I did. And uh, they were ready to stop, uh, you know, uh, get out of mediocrity. You know, they, they felt like it was more for them. They were ready to get to the next level. And uh, the following ensued. And so a couple of years later, here you had it. We have a whole host of uh, people that you know are ready to eliminate excuses from their lives and so that's how it came about man awesome and I think if we could live our lives like that just not having excuses but just pushing forward I mean the goals and and what we can accomplish uh, man is, is amazing so I appreciate that uh, that hashtag also that included in the book but when you so the, the main mission really is just to push forward without excuses, which, I, like I said, I just think that that's amazing. And that kind of leads into the book, uh, No Excuses When Failure Is No Longer an Option. So talk about the book and what the reader can look forward to when they're reading it. Okay, well, the book, you know, the reason why I wrote the book is because you know, before I was able to share this information with anybody else, I had to go through a personal transformation myself. And um, the whole premise of Team No Excuses, the whole No Excuses philosophy is, is accepting accountability and responsibility for where you want to be in your life. You know, despite the conditions that you grew up in, despite not having access to certain resources, despite not having support, despite not having money, all of those things are, are things that could be barriers. However, if you really want what you say you want out of life, despite all of those things, all of the opposition that's coming against you, you have to do what it takes to get there. And so what I learned is I began to take accountability and responsibility for my own life. I learned some very important principles about what one must do to really have what they what they say they want to have. A lot of people say they want something in theory, but are not really ready to do the work that's required to get there. And so what the book is about, is, again, it's about taking accountability and responsibility, looking at those self-imposed limitations and breaking through those barriers so that you can really get to what you say you want to have. And I share some uh, some practical tools and some steps that I have that I've learned that helped me go from a, high, a formerly incarcerated high school dropout to a motivational speaker, a certified life coach, and more and more recently an author. And so wow. the principles that I learned, I wanted to share with other people so that I could support them and help them 
get to where they want to go. Wow, that's that's an amazing testimony and story, man. I um, just applaud you for continuing to push forward and for where you are right now. You know, going to places and speaking and sharing what you've learned because a lot of things that we learn is by experience and then when we're able to share what we learned to me that that's the key right there sharing what we learned to get through what we went through then you're 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 starting to help people that need help that maybe didn't know you know did don't know what what you maybe did to get through what you went through so oh man that's that's amazing that is amazing so talk about some of the places where you've you've uh, spoke at or some of the places where you've your uh some events that you've done and everything that some of the listeners may be interested in well i've done everything from youth groups to uh, uh juvenile to uh high schools to colleges uh, faith-based organization and more recently I began to attract the attention of businesses and organizations and I created a training we have our own proprietary training where we go in and teach businesses and organizations how to eliminate excuses from their workforce to increase, uh, to increase, increase productivity and so we've spoken at, at a number of different places and we're Really excited about the opportunities to come this year as well. Definitely, man. I, I pray for amazing things for you in 2018 for the book, uh, for Team No Excuses. So we we have a mutual friend, uh, Salache Vaz. Um, she's a, a rapper. I've had her on a previous show, and uh, she reached out. So I'm I'm just great to have you on the show to be able to share some of the things that you can that the listeners can use to, to overcome, you know, no excuses and to overcome excuses, period. Um, and, and honestly, I got to look in the mirror too. I mean, excuses don't get you anywhere really at the end of the day. The And I think it's amazing that you're going to businesses as well because principles can be used. These principles can be used anywhere in sports, in music, in and businesses, and that's going to help businesses excel. Uh, which that's that's amazing. It's amazing. Now the uh, the other part of the big book uh, when failure is no longer an option. So talk about that part and kind of what made you add that on to the title of the book. Well, again, man, the book is really targeted towards people who are tired of living mediocre. You know, they know that it's more in them. They know that it's another level to get to, but they don't quite know how to get there. You know, they, 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 they may be experiencing, you know, some levels of success, but really not the type of lifestyle they want to live. You know, they go to work, come home, pay bills, and, and it's just more. And so what I wanted to do is, is I know firsthand how it is to struggle with living in mediocrity. And for me, mediocrity is is, is, is almost like failure, you know, um, to not be your best self, to know you have more in you and not be living up to that, man, is, is, is a hard thing to live with. And so where the subtitle came from, when failure is no longer an option, is basically geared towards anybody that's not at the level that they want to be at, but aspire to get there. And again, it goes right back to what I say, it's about taking accountability and responsibility. You know, so many times in life, we get so many things piled on our plate. We have so many responsibilities. We get overwhelmed and we almost feel like, well, with all the things I have going on right now, how can I take on anything additional to get where I want to go? And I'll share my experience with you. You have to get to a point where you get sick and tired of being sick and tired and you're ready to do whatever it takes. So for me to complete this book, over the past year, I was working two jobs. So I was working in the daytime. I worked as a life coach for the city of Oakland. Then I had another uh, I had another job that I did in the evening and I still had to write my book. And so my goal was to get the book done. And I could have said, you know what, I, I'm working two jobs. I work 13 hours, 14 hours a day. Where do I have the time? But regardless of 
those obstacles being in my way, if there was something that I wanted to do, I had to put myself in a position to do so. And so what I had to do is I had to eliminate television. And so when I would get off both of my jobs, I would come home and I would dedicate my time to writing. And so basically what I'm saying is whatever you want in life, where there's a will, there's a way. It's just about what extremes are you willing to go to to have what you say you really want to have. And so that's why the subtitle uh, went along with the book. Man, amazing. Amazing. I think that this is something that everybody can use. So I'm recommending, I'm telling everybody, go get the book. Uh, where can everybody buy the book? And I believe it came out yesterday, right? Uh, actually, it came out last Wednesday. Last okay. Wednesday. That's when we first launched it. Um, but they can go to the website. Um, it's on Amazon, but uh, they also can go to my website and purchase directly from me, which is uh, edwardlmore.com. Okay. All right. And, and crazy you talk about the city of Oakland. My mom retired from the city of Oakland. She worked there probably almost 30 years she started off as like an administrative assistant and then she moved to the port of oakland so man that's 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 amazing i mean I'm, whenever i come back to to oakland i definitely want to sit down and talk with you for a minute i would love to do that man we can go have a bite to eat and chop it and you know just build yeah definitely definitely so this is a sports show so i definitely want to get uh, the sports talk in your thoughts on and we're talking to Edward L. Moore. I'll put the website in the chat room so you guys can definitely go there and go get the book. So what is your Super Bowl picks? Uh, I know you're a football guy. So who you're picking for the Super Bowl? Well, you know, I, I'm. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I'm uh man, I'm the type to root for the underdog, man. And um since my team is not in there, which is the Niners, I'm from San Francisco. Um <laughs> <laughs> I'm going go I'm, I would love to see somebody uh knock Tom Brady off, man. I'm going for the uh for the Jaguars. Okay. I mean it, there's a chance. There is a chance and um I think a lot of people are thinking the same way you're thinking. Now on the flip side on the NFC, uh, who are you picking? Well, again, I love the Cinderella stories, man. You saw what happened last week with the Vikings. Uh, yeah, I, I would like to get the Vikings go. Just, just because, you know, when you work that hard, I'm, I'm a big supporter of anybody that works hard and overcomes adversity. And so, yeah, and so I feel the same way about the Jaguars. So if I had to pick two teams that I would like to see, just based on – all they had to go through to get where they are this season, it would be the Jags and the Vikings. Okay. All right. I mean, my pick is the Patriots and the Vikings because I just, I just don't see the Jags doing it. But if they do, I would still be excited. Um, I think that would be the biggest underdog Super Bowl ever. A Super Bowl with a backup yeah. quarterback and a quarterback that was counted out. So it's a huge storyline if that, if that was to go down. So you mentioned the, is Tom Brady. The, is Tom Brady out? No, no, no. He's playing. Now they're talking about his hand, okay. the hand situation, which they said he had stitches. But no, he, he's playing. But I, I guarantee you, uh, Jaguars are going to be jumping after that hand and trying to swat at that hand like crazy. Yeah, I bet. I bet. So, so you mentioned uh, you're a fan of the 49ers. So, and I grew up a 49ers fan. Um, like Montana. Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was my team. That was my team. I'm in Texas okay. now, so I switch sides. So uh, don't hate me, but I'm a Cowboys oh, fan. Wait a now. minute. Wait a minute, man. <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute. Man. So who's your team now? The Cowboys. I'm a Cowboys fan. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> but I loved the 49ers growing up. That was my squad: Jerry Rice, um, Roger Craig. So what what are the teams are you you the bay like uh, in in all sports or just with the 49ers? No, I'm the bay. You know one thing about me, man, I'm a, I'm a Niners fan, but I'm not a Raider hater. So I even I was even excited for the Raiders, you know, when they started doing better. They had a disappointing season. 
Um, but yeah, I'm, I, 